About 10 years ago, Anna Moreno was a Ph.D. student at UC San Diego when she had a free Sunday night and did what some serious students do. She started reading science papers. I came across a paper that talked about these people in Pakistan, street performers that could, you know, walk on fire, do different performances with no pain whatsoever. And when they studied these people, they, they actually found that they have a mutation in their genome. That story was the spark that led Moreno to try to imagine a gene therapy that would relieve chronic pain. Her personal life also inspired her. She remembers her vivacious aunt and godmother from when she was growing up in Mexico. Her aunt came down with trigeminal neuralgia, a nerve disorder that causes an intense stabbing pain to the head and the face. I saw my aunt become, you know, she was the life of the party. You know, she, she became, she went from that to someone that was, you know, always in pain, and it's induced by eating, by showing, so there's no quality of life. Moreno has founded a company called Navega Therapeutics to commercialize and test her patented gene therapy. She says it has shown good results in mice. Human clinical trials are 12 months away. In this treatment, you inject the shell of a virus into the body that carries a protein that changes gene expression. It turns off part of the DNA that allows pain impulses to travel along channels that lead to the brain. And these sodium channels open and close depending on pain. So when they open, it's like an electrical shock, kind of like turning on the light. You start seeing this electrical signal. For example, when you touch something hot, you know, it starts here, the sodium channel, the ion exchange goes through your arm, through your back, to your brain, that's how you feel the pain. So we can turn it off in the spinal level, depending on where your pain is located. Moreno began working on this pain relief model when the opioid addiction crisis started ramping up 10 years ago. Chronic pain and opioid use are part of my story also. Almost 20 years ago, I was in a serious traffic accident where I suffered traumatic brain injury. Ever since then, I've had chronic pain in the lower part of my body. I've tried lots of different ways to try to ease that pain, acupuncture, chiropractic, cannabis, but the only thing that really worked, and it worked every time, was opioid medication. First of all, I'm sorry to hear of, of, of your pain and, and, and suffering, and you know you're not alone. There's so many people in this country going through this. I spoke with Eric Garland, a professor in psychiatry at UC San Diego at the Sanford Institute for Empathy and Compassion. And some people do quite well on the opioid. Um, And there are other folks who, over time, they, because of side effects or because of the natural tolerance that develops to the drug, they may find that they're not getting the kind of relief that they want to get. Health professionals estimate between 20 and 25 percent of people who are prescribed opiates end up with opioid use disorders, which include full-blown addiction. Garland says there are pain management alternatives, including those that I have tried. But even if they are going to work for you, it doesn't mean you'll have access to them or that your health insurance is going to cover them. Garland's research has focused on using mindfulness and meditation to address chronic pain. He says negative emotions that correspond with pain can make it more intense. They turn up the volume of our pain and make pain hurt worse. Mm -hmm. And so there's a real need for therapies like mindfulness uh, that that can train the mind to be less emotionally reactive to pain. And that can actually turn down the volume of the pain in the brain. One person who has used the mindfulness model is Dan Kruger, a professional motorcycle racer. He has suffered chronic pain for decades and been dependent on opiates, due in part to numerous injuries sustained on the racetrack. He worked with Garland, practiced meditation, and three years into therapy, he says things are much better. My chronic pain is 20, 25% less than it was while I was on opioids. So my chronic pain is, is, is lower. I have it. I have it right now as I speak to you, but it is absolutely manageable. On the other hand, there are some patients who have relied on long-term use of opiates with minimal side effects. Some patients with chronic pain have formed a lobbying group called Don't Punish Pain to rally against new restrictions on opioid use. Thomas Fudge, KPBS News.